The pre-built NAS market has been dominated by Synology, but we have all been wanting more, whether it be better CPUs, better networking, or even just the fact that certain features were removed and we want them back, there's a gap in the market that no one seems to be able to fill until now, maybe. This is the Ugreen NASSYNC DXP4800 Plus. And at first glance, it has some pretty incredible hardware, but the big question is, can the software stack up? Now this video is sponsored by Ugreen and the device as well as four four terabyte hard drives and two NVMe SSDs were provided to me for review at no cost but these thoughts are my own, as you will see. So let's break this down into two categories, hardware and software. The DXP4800 Plus comes with an Intel Gold 8505 processor, eight gigabytes of DDR5 memory, and yes, a two and a half gigabit and 10 gigabit NIC. It has two Gen 4 NVMe SSD slots for cache or storage pools, and a bunch of USB ports on the front and back. It also has an SD card reader, which I've never used in a NAS, but it's pretty cool to have. Listen, the device is beautiful. It has a full aluminum body and everything about it is premium. It's a four bay NAS device that has drive trays that expand and contract with a push. This makes adding and removing drives very easy, assuming you use them right, which I wasn't doing in the beginning. All of this adds up to an incredible hardware package and honestly, it blew me away the second I opened it. But hardware can only take you so far and since most NAS devices are thrown in a corner and interacted with through their web interface, the software is just as, if not more important, and that's where things start to get questionable. The setup process is what you'd expect. Plug in the NAS, find it on your network, connect to it and install the OS. When you're in the OS, you'll create your storage pool and volume, and at that point, you're ready to go. There's not much more to it. Now let's break down the OS because this is the big part. I actually really like what Ugreen is trying to do here. All the fancy software that you see on most NAS devices do not exist. And I actually like that. In my opinion, too many companies building these pre-built NAS devices try and offer everything from a software perspective that more mature companies like Synology offer. And what you get is an OS that has a ton of applications and nothing works right. Generally makes it an unreliable mess. So in this case, simplicity is good. Kind of. The Ugreen OS is designed to be a NAS first. You can configure a storage pool and volume, create shared folders, access those shared folders using SMB, NFS, and more, and basically just have a functional NAS device. Now they have a few applications, but quite frankly, they are extremely basic and immature at this point. And honestly, that shouldn't bother you because you're not gonna buy this device for any of those applications, especially through a Kickstarter. So this all sounds pretty good, but, no, it's not all good. This is a pre-production unit with pre-production software, but it doesn't work right, plain and simple. For example, you can configure a bunch of shared folders and each of those shared folders can have different permissions, but try and access that NAS through SMB and you'll see that everyone has access to everything. Basic SMB permissions do not work right now, so all of the data on your NAS is accessible by anyone on your network. Now the 10 gigabit port is just not consistent. And at times it seems to work flawlessly and others the speed bounces all over the place. Why? I have no idea. I've been banging my head against the wall because of this, but it doesn't seem to be stable and it should be. There's also a bunch of other features like the Ugreen Link service, which is supposed to allow for remote access. But I mean, if SMB permissions aren't working, Will you trust the Ugreen Link service to be secure? You shouldn't. There are other bugs like network folders that simply don't work. And when I say that, I mean that it doesn't show the information that it's supposed to. And since a lot of the OS is filled with dropdown menus instead of free text boxes, there's no way to get it to work. It just doesn't work. Now this is where I start to get frustrated because this is the absolute bare minimum in my mind. Creating a shared folder, moving data to the shared folders, and ensuring that only users that have permission can access the shared folders. It's pretty simple. So when two thirds of that equation doesn't work, you start to question what other bugs are gonna pop up, which then leads us to the final key feature, which is backups. Now, everyone knows that RAID is not a backup. So having a reliable and trustworthy backup application for your data is the bare minimum. Unfortunately, one does exist if you're willing to use rsync or another Ugreen NAS, which isn't even ready right now, so the main point is you can back up your data using rsync. Now for tech savvy people, this might not be that big of a deal, but for most, it's not good enough. You need to be able to back up your data offsite, preferably with file encryption to ensure that the data is protected. 
Right now, the options are just too limited. And that completely ignores other data integrity tools normally available like file and folder level snapshots, which this device should have right now. But I was told that it's coming. Now there are some other things that appear to be working well and I was happy to see that my UPS was picked up right away and some of the basic features like HTTPS redirection, static network configurations, and some other generally basic features work as expected, which is good. But with all of that said, it's hard to be excited about some of their current applications or even new ones like Docker, which is coming, because in your mind, you need to be confident that the core functionality is working. So truthfully, I hope they delay everything and make what they currently have rock solid. And if you do have a rock solid NAS, those new features are what can take this device over the top and make it a true competitor in this space, which let's face it is what we all need. They have the hardware on point. They hit the hardware out of the park. Now it's a matter of getting the software there, which leads us back to that HDMI port. If you install Unraid or TrueNAS on this device, it might possibly be the best NAS device you can purchase, especially at the Kickstarter price. However, there is no support and you're basically on your own. So would you buy this device to try and get it to be what you want and understand that if you break something, you're on your own, or will you buy it and deal with the OS issues that are everywhere? That's for you to decide. To be clear, I do think that Ugreen is heading in the right direction. And since I received this device, there have been tons of software updates. I mean, literally every day. And those software updates have fixed so many bugs. I mean, this software was not even close to where it is right now, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, there were various languages when you navigate the OS, and it just seemed like an alpha level product. I'm happy to say, seems like a beta now, which is where I think it needs to be at minimum for you to back this product if you want to. It also has the benefit of being simple. So we're not talking about major leaps that have to really be made here, just core functionality that has to be improved. The point is you're going to run into bugs. And when you do, you shouldn't be surprised, at least right now. So again, I don't want to be too hard on you, Green, because this device really, really has the potential to be great. And to be clear, I think they're on the right track, especially with the simplicity of the OS. Due to its simplicity, you're talking about a few patches that can really turn this OS around. And if those patches were already released, this might be a totally different reveal. Now, is it gonna be as polished and feature-filled as something like Synology DSL? No, not yet. But in my mind, that's why the Kickstarter exists. You're backing a device that has the potential to be great, with the understanding that as of right now, it's not. Might not be the best situation, but it's also not the worst. They're making consistent progress, and I'm not sure what more we as consumers can ask from an early beta pre-production device. So do I like it? Yes, I do. Is it where it needs to be right this second? No, and that might be okay. So in summary, you're backing potential. And while I wish that some of this basic stuff worked today, you probably won't get your hands on this device for a few months, and at that point, we could be having a very different conversation. So if you want to purchase one of these devices, a link to the Kickstarter will be in the description when it starts. And once again, thank you to you Green for sponsoring and sending out this device. And I hope that over time, this becomes the NAS device we all want. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.